Hi, I'm Andy and I'm here with Maria. We're from a team at Graphex that have been looking into Airbnb listings in New York. Yeah, so yeah. as you might be already familiar with our different type of analysis, today we're going to be working with a use facial one. Exactly, so we've got a data set from Airbnb here and it's got everything you might expect to find it in Airbnb data set, the, the price of the property, where it is, the number of bedrooms it has, and importantly, the review scores as well. So how the customers have rated the property for accuracy, cleanliness, communication, and things like this. So I'm gonna bring up the uh, geospatial analysis type and choose to plot points. So it's important to remember that when we're working with geospatial analysis, we need latitude and longitude variables. These are coordinates that help graphics to plot our data on maps. So in this data, luckily we have latitude and longitude already ready to go. You can extract latitude and longitude using APIs, but it's recommended that you have them ready to work with when you come with come to your project in graphics. So before I execute the project and I'm ready to go, I wanna set my targets and factors, and these help me to create clusters in the data set. So why is it useful to question this type of analysis? It's, it's a good question because we're plotting not a network visualization here, we're plotting a map, but, even still, there's gonna be relationships in our data. So by clustering the data, by setting targets and factors, we can identify what are the connections between a property in Manhattan and a property in Bronx. And we can see that very visually using color mapping or by inspecting the clusters themselves. So I would just execute the project here and then I've got it ready to go. And the first thing I'm gonna see is the graph. Yeah, so the graph, as we can all see here, it draws very, very clearly the map of New York and it's divided by districts. Exactly. And what we can immediately see is the density of Airbnb listings in each district. So as we head further out of the city, properties get more sparse and especially true in Staten Island. But as we head closer into the city centre around Brooklyn and Manhattan, they're gonna get more dense. There's a lot more listings here. Yeah, but what about the prices? It's an interesting question. So earlier I created a price quartile. Uh, this is a segmentation, um, a, um, a manual segmentation, and I used the price variable, and I opened up the stats here, and I used Q1, medium, and Q3 and to segment the data into four categories, medium, low price, low price, high price, and medium high. So the easiest way to explore price uh, in these quartiles is to apply color mapping. So I'm gonna do that now. And we can see that our high value properties are, are really bright and our low value properties are really dull. So, I mean, it, it seems obvious to say that the high value properties are closer to the center of town. Is that something we'd expect to see, Maria? Yeah, definitely. That's how it goes every single time. Uh, what I would do now would be comparing these same <laughs> price quartiles in the compare section so we can understand what the difference uh, between the listings that are more ex expensive and the listings that are cheaper. Exactly. So we can bring up the compare panel now. And what the compare panel shows us is a series of charts that uh, explain the difference between our, our variable values in our data. So I've got already got loaded up the four values for the price quartiles and the charts we see here explain why these quartiles are different from one another. So immediately, I mean, the most relevant variable we can see is room type, which I think is something that maybe I would expect because as somebody who likes to use Airbnb myself, I, uh, I would much prefer to have an entire place, but obviously these properties tend to be more expensive. Is that something you'd expect to see? Yeah, yeah, definitely. If I look at this um, and also looking at, for example, district, I think it yeah. makes total sense. Um, but what I would be interested about knowing more would be the variable host sense, um, because maybe that means that if you started just renting your house now, it's going to be cheaper or expensive or... Yeah, this is a really interesting chart uh, because our um, medium high, medium low and high uh, value ranges, they all kind of follow the same distribution here, but the low value range, it seems that more hosts who have 
become uh, Airbnb hosts in the last three years are listing their value, uh, listing their property as cheaper, which is why we have this sudden variation here. I wonder if maybe we could explore that further to find out what's going on. Yeah, definitely. I would be interested in knowing in which districts we find this new host. So if we uh, head back to the graph and we want to find our hosts since, um, so I can find it here, host since. And what I want to do is I want to apply a filter that's going to restrict the data shown in the graph to just hosts that have listed their properties in the last three years. So I've got that up here. This is going from 2018 all the way through to the end, the most recent data. And if I change this, yep, it's set to relative, then I can see how the values in the data are relatively distributed uh, according to uh, the selection that I've made. So hosts from the last three years. So this gray bar down here represents the value distribution in the whole data set and the blue bar represents the value distribution just in, in this selection. Yes. So here's your district chart, Maria. Yeah, so I can see that they are not in the regular districts that you might think of. They're like in Queens and Bronx, right? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, particularly Brooklyn, we have a lot less properties that have been listed more recently. I, I suppose this is something we might expect to find because if um, the data goes all the way back to 2008, properties in the center of town are gonna to be in higher demand. It's more likely that they'll come out sooner. And as Airbnb has grown in popularity, people in Queens, people in Bronx, and people a little bit in Staten Island have realized there's an opportunity here. Um, so something that I'm curious about now is how is the yeah. review scores? for these new listings? Because you know, if I find a listing somewhere outside of the city center and it's cheaper, why not put me there, you know? Yeah, cheaper is, is better if uh, it certainly is better. So let's have a look. Um, I've got many review score variables, but I wanna take a look at just the rating, which is the general one. And to be honest, Maria, that doesn't look very good for you. Um, I think that this signifies we've still got our filter active. So this is just showing uh, properties that have been listed in the last three years. And it seems like they've, they're have they not as well reviewed as, as other properties in the data set, which I think is maybe unfortunate. I mean, it makes sense. Let's just speak to the city center, you know. Let's stick to the city center, yeah. Okay, great. So this has been a very interesting and useful um, project, and I'm definitely creating this with other cities. Good idea. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.